literally I just started recording right after I ended, I ended the previous one. So, I believe we completed the quest. It was act of fetch. Okay, so I got everything. Now we gotta go to the old guy. Give him some sign of stone. So this is what I love about this game, is that the gambit system is so good. I don't have to give orders to every character. And mix the fact that, you know, it's not random battles, all, you can see all the monsters in, in the world, you can... Um, it, there's no battle transition, then a small little cutscene prepping all the, the players up for battle, and then, you know, you get, you get your time to actually play. It's all on the screen, and the gambit system makes it so that your character can can pretty much act on their own. See, this is why I don't. This is why I, I, I. It's part of the style. I get it. It's part of what makes JRPG, you know, turn-based. You get to control it. But see, like, say a tabletop game, you at least. You know, did, you didn't have an area to constantly, you know, give give five seconds to explain how the battle is going to go about. Where the heck am I going? Oh, dang. I, I, I missed that. I missed the giant door. That's my problem. Dang. So, I go to the old guy. Hey, Vaughn. Hmm? It's yeah, been a long time since I generally been like how, how this game Too long. I had a makes really good combat time. not so much of a well, repetitive chore. It eliminates a lot of things that are, quite honestly, boy. I don't want to um, constantly, to you know, have to tell me. my teammates, yes, use, use your dagger to attack and here. slash at the enemy. I want them to sort of have... Common sense, so I'm you not look, going so you speak, okay. so I speak. That's what I wanted to hear. I'm just saying. See you later. It's kind of easier. That I don't have to worry about what my teammates will do. I can just control my one character, Sounds and my teammates will do whatever the computers will tell them to do. That's what I always like. I always love game where I cooperated with the the computer, co cooperated with a teammate to achieve an objective you know see I don't like games where uh, actually no I do like games that do this but I I like games that make use of the one at man army but I also like games where the computer is in control of your teammates and they're just as valuable as you are to his territory to say I know in the sewer bottom but that's not the way you'll go no you'll take the left door down into the Garam site waterway. The waterway leads to a stair. The stair oh, to the palace cellars. That's your way in. But don't go counting your gill just yet, my boy. Getting into the palace was the easy part. The way into the treasury is carefully hidden. <sighs> yeah, yeah, That's yeah, where yeah. this crescent stone comes in. The magics it bears can open the hidden door to the treasury, you see. Listen, Vaughn, for the words I shall speak are most important and not to be forgotten. Do you understand? Yeah, 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 the I understand. Just let me do what I want, okay? Sunstone strength okay, you're not gonna to light that. the clouded way. Once in the mm -hmm. palace, you'll find the signet tile. Very important. Give to it the sun's power, and it will light your path. Very well. Oh, a warning. Be aware that if you're caught, you'll spend the rest of your short life rotting in the Nalbina dungeon. So, look sharp, my boy. And don't go running off before you're ready. Plans freshly hatched have a habit of tumbling from the nest straight into the hunter's stew pot. <laughs> Yeah, I like what this game does. It, it eliminates a lot of the tediousness that most JRPGs inevitably have when you have random encounters, transitional con that are this 
transition from the real world into combat. The turn-based mechanic, you know, unless you can be as riveting and as interesting as like Persona 5, you're not going to keep me being by there for five hours. And I'm going to get real sick and tired of your battle themes, my friend. So Final Fantasy XII, the way that it is set up, the entire battle system is so smooth. It's not repetitive. It's not. It doesn't feel like I'm wasting my time. You know, if I see an enemy, I don't have to wait, say, five seconds of a transition just to get to the combat, and then being told, please, you know, smash, uh, please attack. And I don't have to tell my character to please attack. They can just attack because they're smart enough to know that. I don't know. I always find that as mishatch at times. I need to go up from the. I want to go to the top. Actually, should I go to the top? Uh, I have 36. I can buy the Oaken Pole. And I can buy Light Armor too. Wait a moment. Sound has been eliminated. My mom just came home, so you gotta make this quick, boys. Oh wait, I can buy a headgear. That would be pretty useful. Time to go back up. Go back up. Go to... To the market area. Buy some armor, because that's important. I don't need to buy any potions because I've been pretty good with my health. How much health do I have? 165. Pretty good. Okay. Whee! Obviously, Penelope left your party, so I don't really have to worry about her. Sounds good. You can buy that, light armor. Actually, I want to sell my stuff. Uh, I don't like the fact that there's not really an easy way to, to max out the items. It's good enough for what it is. But I wish there was some way to do that. No, I can buy this. Okay. Okay, with your purchase. Yes. Right ahead of you. Um, that'll be it, actually. Let's go get an oaken pole. Apparently, I can also go R&R, &R, whatever that's supposed to mean. Okay, I can apparently go... Oh, I can go down here, too. Huh, I can use white magic. What's this? Restore HP to one HP critical eye. I can use, oh, that's pretty cool. I can use white magic here too. Oh, oh, oh. Cool. Okay, so this seems like a mixture. Interesting. I'm gonna find this class a bit enjoyable. The Oaken Pole. Um, I really want to, really want to try that. Mm. I'll try the Oaken Pole. So I mentioned one time that having Vaughn, whoa, okay, I just saw something, are you kidding me? Oh my word, the invade on this is so OP, my invade goes from 5 to 30, that's insane, that is insane. Um, 
point. Okay, for, for those of you who don't know, um, I'm, I'm playing this as a... I'm playing as a knight as well. And the, the invade stat is pretty important in terms of combat. It essentially dictates your, I think, your ability to block attacks instead of actually invading. You should have just said invade, block instead of invade. But when you play as a knight, if you have a shield, your, your evade at most from early in the game is, I believe, at, um, like at 12. But with an oaken pole, apparently you jump that to 30. That's a lot. So thank goodness I bought the oaken pole. Thank goodness on that. I love the fast forwarding on this. Now, of course, here's the thing. The, the knight as a class is supposed to be a high health, high defense class job. So of course, he's not gonna have the best evade. I'm not expecting most evade, but I do like these, you know, these benefits and, and negatives. This is pretty cool. This is, I like this. I like the monk, pretty cool. Just skip this, I don't wanna listen. Oh my word, that's a long, that's a long pole. That's a long pole. Uh, go down here. Go down here. Beat up the dire rat. Okay. I like um, that three hit combo you did there, uh, Bond. Please keep doing that. Actually, I'm gonna. I like my evade. I like my evade. That's pretty good. Now, to be fair, in the first, my first playthrough, my other playthrough as a knight, I did a few bounties. When I received Pinello, I did, I did a, a bounty for her. So, my first playthrough, I entered the dungeon with like over 300 health. So it's pretty weird to. To come into this with only 185, uh, but I think it was a night class. I, I, I had a, I invested some license points that gave me extra bonus up, and oh my, there's a lot of them. This is pretty cool. Oh my, that's two blocks. That is pretty good. Oh man, he, the 30 evade. You you would not get two blocks in a row with 12 evade. I'm gonna tell you that. I'm just gonna keep whacking him. Okay. I like this. I like. I like it. Again, it's. It goes back to my. My, one of my loves of RPGs is that you can go through the game as different characters and do different things and play differently. Maybe you don't want to go through the game as a knight, you want to go through the game as a um, as a monk, theoretically, anyway. And being able to, say, have characters just be experts in everything negates sort of the importance of your choices, in a, in a way. It's kind of funny. How it does that? You wouldn't think that it does. We would think that having more choices by him itself allows it to be, say, more free in an RPG game. But in fact, it makes your choices less significant in the long run, since there's no consequence. There's no. There's there's no cost to trying to master being a knight, a, a thief. 
and all that, and then somehow not th not have them overlap in terms of cost and and strengths. I mean, how can you be both a knight and a, and a thief? Well, according to Skyrim, you can be anything you want. So, you know, oh, you're wearing tough armor. Don't worry, just um, uh, just be a uh, level nine knight sneak uh, skill. You can want to sneak around anywhere. You One of my friend points out is that in Skyrim you can pick and you.